Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for attending this session. Um, before the start of the session, we would request you to uh, switch off your mobile phones or keep them on silent, and would appreciate if you can observe silence during the session. The session would the duration of the session would be one hour long, where the format would be 45 minutes of the discussion of our esteemed, esteemed guests, and the last 15 minutes would be for the question and answers. When the question and answer sessions would start, we would highly appreciate if you could keep your questions short and concise and refrain from any outrageous statements. Thank you. The session's uh, title is Iowa Silk Re Root Residency Program. Our uh, moderator is Mr. Christopher Mirror. Uh, I would like to speak uh, that uh, he has been invited by the US Embassy. I would like him to be uh, taking the session forward from now on. Thank you. Thank you very much. So the format we're going to follow is I'll say a few words about the International Writing Program, and then I'm going to turn to my colleagues here to have them talk about uh, their experience in the International Writing Program. And I'll quickly introduce them. Some of them I know need no introduction. Uh, Bina Shah, who's a fiction writer, New York Times columnist, uh, was in the IWP what year? 2011. 2011. Sitting next to her is H.M. Nakvi, who's the author of Homeboy, and he was in the IWP in... One of these years. One of these years, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm always most impressed by the fact that H.M. Uh, was a banker at one point in his life. That makes every writer scared. <laughs> Next to me is Sridhala Swami, who is a poet and the author of four children's books, and she lives in Bangalore. On the other side of me is Dr. Kaveri Nambisham. She is a surgeon and uh, the author of six novels now, seven novels now, and at work on a new nonfiction book about health care in India. And next to her is the newest winner of the Best Fiction Prize, Shandana Minhas, whose uh, survival tips for lunatics <laughs> took, took the stage last night. Okay, so briefly, the International Writing Program was founded in 1967, and over the, in the last nearly half century, we have hosted 1,400 writers from 140 countries. To be accepted into the program, uh, you have to have published at least one novel uh, or a book of poems or a book of essays. We like to say that the writers uh, are early to mid-career writers who have achieved already national acclaim and perhaps international acclaim. They come to Iowa City for a three-month-long residency, which takes place in the fall, and they are part of a group of 30 to 40 writers who write, who give readings, who give panel discussions, uh, who engage in a free and frank conversation among themselves about all manner of things. And we hope that by the end of their stay in Iowa, they will have written many new pages and made many new friendships and have a different understanding not only of the United States, but of all of the literary traditions of the writers they encounter during their time in Iowa City, a very small city in the middle of the country, which is also the only UNESCO city of literature in the New World. And so with that, that's just a quick overview, and we're going to now embark upon what I hope will be a good conversation to give you a, a picture of what uh, the International Writing Program is about, the kinds of things that happen during it, and some of the personal experiences of these writers. And I'd like to begin with Bina, if I could. Sure, the sick person. The sick one. <laughs> um, so Wherever how do you want to do this? Yeah. Tell us about your experience here, the things that, that you took from it. And yeah. Um, well, it, I had not heard of the International Writers Program, but I had heard of the Iowa Writers Workshop, which is the oldest um, creative writing program in the United States and probably the most renowned in the world. And anybody who's a writer or hopes to be a writer dreams of going to the Iowa Writers Workshop. If any of you watch the show Girls, even the, the fictional heroine of that show ends up at the Iowa Writers Workshop. So. It, Kurt Vonnegut taught there. Hunter S. Thompson threatened somebody in a bar with a shotgun there. Uh, you know, uh, some, of our, some of the United States' most famous writers and world-famous writers have gone to Iowa. And in the IWP, you had people like Orhan Pamuk, who went to the, to the IWP. 
and John Banville, and just a host of very famous people, Khalid Khalifa from Syria, just real people who just turned out to be very Kurutulan Heather. She went there too. Amazing. I did not know that. Okay. So this gives you an idea of how historic this program is. The International Writers Program is the international wing. And as Chris explained, it's a three-month residency. We go, we went there, we lived in Iowa in cornfields, in the middle of cornfields, for three months. And you know, I have had experience with the United States, as some of you maybe have guessed, but I had never lived in the Midwest. So that was a real eye-opening experience for me. And people were extremely friendly, extremely curious. <coughs> Uh, they invited us to their homes. They invited us to their farms. I have video of us uh, sitting on a tractor during a hayride. <laughs> and it was just the most probably American and un-American experience that you could hope to have. American in the sense that this is the heartland of America. And so the people that you meet are typically American and typically sort of corn-fed, blonde Iowans. But un-American in the sense that Iowa City is a very international city. It is the international uh, city, UNESCO city of literature. <coughs> I'm going to have to stop very soon. But um, it has seen hundreds and hundreds of writers come from all over the world to spend three months there. And it has made that city so rich. It's made this city so different and cosmopolitan in a Midwestern way. Uh, anybody who passes through Iowa City can't help be a, but be affected by that. And I very much was during my three months there. And I managed to write a lot of a book which hasn't been published as yet. But um, it's sitting in my agent's office, so maybe you'll see the fruits of that residency one day. So, thank you. Um. <coughs> You know, writing uh, is a horribly lonely vocation. Um, and uh, you sort of, unlike other professions, uh, you rely on an infrastructure. Uh, you, if you are um, uh, sort of a lawyer, you've got an office. Um, and you get compensated uh, regularly. You know where you stand. As a writer, you can work diligently for years and never um, know where you stand. And and there's no guarantees uh, in this in this uh, in, in, in this thing. And 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 so um, a residency is a very peculiar sort of institution uh, where you are paid to write. Uh, you're paid, you're, you, they sort of, they, they, most residencies give you room and board and a small sort of daily uh, per diem. Um, and, um, and you interact with others of your ilk, other sort of feral creatures uh, that, uh, that sort of like me populate the night and I write at night. Um, and and it's a, it's 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 so surprising because for the first time uh, since you one has taken up the pen I took up the pen when I was four or five I, you you are in a you are part of a community and the IWP community um, <coughs> is a, again a sort of an anomaly because you don't merely get uh, you you get you get writers from all over the world so i was closest uh, at uh, in in this program to an icelander and you know i'd never met an icelander before and uh, and a wonderfully talented writer whose first novel unlike mine which is a mere bildungsroman a coming of age story the first the first novel this fellow, uh, Solvi, uh, with a very complicated polysyllabic last name. Um, Solvi wrote a novel uh, that was a take on Dante's Unf Inferno. It was a bar crawl in Reykjavik. And, you know, the, the sort of, the, and, and, and it was, so, I mean, you know, he was not merely a charming character who one would play billiards with in the evening. Um, he was a writer of great substance and he might have had you know, he, he, if he wrote in English, he had great, great resonance. And it was 
and it was you know one one came across somebody who um like 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 me has sort of been working on his craft um um and it was it was fabulous because we we wouldn't work together but we'd meet each other in the evening um every every night um and so you know to 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 find a community to meet an icelander and to avail of um, the hospitality uh, that chris merrill and his team um uh had for us was it was a unexpectedly um um a wonderful experience um i remember the first evening uh, an indian writer met me in the hall and and said hey jam nakvi i'm it's good to meet you i said uh, it's lovely to meet you well, what the hell are we doing here <laughs> you know we were, we were in this sort of uh it it was it, 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 it was called the Iowa the Iowa hotel it had this uh, the ambiance of a youth hostel in <laughs> in, in bulgaria or some place you know uh, but it didn't re- but and and I, i you know it didn't really matter after a few days a few weeks a few months that place was home and i miss that horrible hostel uh, <laughs> because um it, it because it was such a wonderful experience Thank you. <laughs> I'm just, uh, HM as you were saying that I was remembering a we had a writer from uh who was born in Cairo, raised in Sudan and was living in Vienna and on his first day he was sitting at a uh, he 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 went walked into an Indian restaurant and met another writer there. They had lunch. The other writer said, "Well, what are you going to do now?" and he said, "Well, I think I'm going to go for a long walk around the town and see the sights." And and the other writer looked at him and said these are the sites <laughs> so it, there there is an advantage to having no distractions besides other writers uh, i was at uh, the iwp in 2013 in the same year that chandana minhas was also there and uh, on the very first day that i landed over there you know you're given your room key you still don't know who the writers are and you're still getting used to this whole thing and uh after getting over jet lag and everything i walk out of my room and chandana walks out of hers and then we introduce ourselves to each other and of course the the next inevitable question in those first interactions is where are you from and uh i said india and she said pakistan <laughs> and it was just ridiculous that we had rooms next to each other <laughs> halfway across the planet in iowa city and uh you yeah, the the you know the at the end of your first 3 or 4 days the amazing thing is the the sheer exoticism of meeting writers from the ivory coast from latvia from i don't know bahrain new zealand uh places that you know you're never going to visit in your lifetime i'm i'm not ever probably going to go to iran i'm i know for for a fact that i'm not going to go to latvia so you know <laughs> the, the, but uh, when you get past the exoticism of you planting a flag on a map in your mind and saying in a way you're claiming those places as your own because you suddenly have friends in all of these places and then you can say at the end of your first week that I have friends in all of these places in the world and it's great to say that but then you realize what you have is 10 weeks with these people and there must be ways to get to know them better than the fact that they belong to these places that they do and uh, I I don't know if this happens in other years but it was it was a fantastic thing that happened in our years that you know you're you're sitting over breakfast and you're talking or you're sitting by the river and you're talking to a different set of people you're walking somewhere to pick up you you do these mundane things like getting your library card or uh, going and getting your social security and and you're talking about all kinds of things and then you realize that no matter where around the globe you are there are certain things that you have in common as writers uh your your place in a particular geopolitical location in in that time and the things that concern you socially and politically as a writer the the immediate circumstances may be different but as writers how you approach 
uh, how you write about these things. We, we find that we have things in common in those matters and that we need to talk about these things, that we want to talk about these things. Um, so in our year, the amazing thing that happened was we just said we want to have these conversations uh, and include everyone in them. So we, we kind of just set up little reading groups. We had one evening a week when we would all meet in our common room where we would have very wild parties at other times. But <laughs> We would belly dance, and we would. I would share Bollywood dances, and the uh, the writer from Egypt would teach us belly dancing, and uh, yeah, it was. Uh, that didn't so happen in my. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, this I, I thought not. <laughs> thought it might not, and. Uh, uh, and the, the IWP office is the most amazing thing. I mean, some of them are volunteers, they're writers, they've pe been people who've uh, been through the writer's workshop. And this is an opportunity for them to meet writers from across the world. And uh, we spend a lot of time interacting with them. And they kind of firefight for us all the time. So somebody wants, uh, somebody smoked in their room, they have a fine to pay, you run to the people in the Iowa house. <laughs> <laughs> you, you run to the people in the IWP office. Um, you, uh, s somebody is bleeding after smoking too much and then the ambulance is called and it has to be someone from the IWP office who's taking care of this stuff. Uh, you know, these, we're writers, right? We're supposed to be these fantastic intellectual people making up these stories and having these deep conversations. And these, this is the nature of our daily interaction. And... Uh, uh, one of the people at the office said when I went and I said, you know what, I've discovered that there are about five or six people who want to do yoga together and I'm going to teach them a class. So we need a yoga room. And he said, in all the years that I have been at the IWP office, I don't think anybody has asked us for such a thing. So, you know, arrangements were made. Um, this is it. I mean, on the one hand, you're talking about these really deep and important things and on the other hand, you're, uh, you're wondering where to do your best grocery shopping. And wouldn't you say that the, the interesting thing about being together for such a long period of time is that in, let's say, a literature festival, you have two, three days, you can keep your mask up. But if you're there week after week after week, you reveal yourselves because you're having these daily interactions. You become more human to everyone around you. Yeah, when HM said it's like being in a hostel, that's exactly right. If anyone has ever lived in a hostel, you know that uh, you, these are people that you... It's like, it's like being married to many people at the same time. <laughs> you, you have to live with them whatever they are on a day-to-day -day basis. I think we're going to put that on our brochure. It's like being married to many people at the same time. Why don't you try polygamy? I was... Uh, Sort of, I had been writing for some quite a few years before I went to Iowa, and uh, it happened when someone asked me if I was interested in doing this um, Iowa writing program, and I scratched my head for a few days because um, although I had many dreams as a writer, doing a writer's residence in the U.S. was not one of them. Uh, partly because I have always been intimidated by the idea of uh, America and I didn't feel I would fit in um, in the atmosphere. So uh, I thought for a while but that person phoned me and said no I think um, you know we sh you should go there and she told me what I have to do to you know the application and so on I did it. And um, the funny thing is that when I went to Iowa I found that it was not at all intimidating. It was very different. I think Iowa in that sense is very different to many other parts of, I of the U.S. which we get the images of or we hear about. You know, it is, it is very different. And uh, Chris um, must take the blame for it, <laughs> for not making it intimidating. Uh, and he and his team, uh, they somehow um, create the atmosphere where all are... Um, part of a family and uh, you can be as good or as bad as you want to be and you are forgiven you know um, it was great but, but not forgotten not forgotten <laughs> yes not forgotten 
um, I started first few days, I, I mean, we are given a massive bed in our rooms, you know. Uh, so first few days, I tried sleeping on it, but it was so soft. I never, not used to such a soft mattress. And I couldn't sleep. So I pulled down a lot of sheets and I put them on the other side, you know, like well away from the door. And I started sleeping on the floor. And I found that very comfortable. And so I spent three months uh, sleeping on the floor. <laughs> And when people came, I'd just uh, say hi. And then, I mean, m most of my friends knew what I was doing. But, you know, I managed to stay respectable in spite of that. <laughs> and, and at the end of the um, whole three months, I was judged, my room was judged the second unti untidiest room. <laughs> <laughs> the first being a Jamaican, <laughs> Kai Miller. So it? that was Kai. Was Kai. Oh, Kai Miller, okay. yes. So that was all right. And uh, somewhere along the way, uh, I remember we had um, an Irish, uh, there, was, there was somebody in this youth, ho the youth hostel come hotel, there was an Irishman staying nearby, and I got to know him, and he had uh, some problem with his foot, and I had, you know, helped him out with it, uh, being a doctor. So uh, one fine day, I, uh, we heard the fire alarm, and everybody rushed out. Uh, we, we have to go down uh, several floors and we all huddled in a corner and the fire, um, you know, those firefighters and the en fire engines came uh, and uh, after a long time um, of standing outside, not knowing where the fire had been, we were allowed back in. And I remember the Irishman had to hobble down the fire escape place and I was trying to help him and all the rest of it without, you know, big drama. And um, we went back and we were wondering what happened. And then we, the story slowly came out that the, there was a writer from China and he had uh, tried, uh, he put his bagel, uh, he put a bagel in the microwave. And then he sat down to write. And about 20 minutes later, <laughs> there was smoke everywhere and the fire alarm went. So the poor chap was feeling so bad that he spent the rest of the three months apologizing to every one of us. <laughs> and he would always do this and say, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Although we wouldn't have suspected him. Yeah. And, um, and uh, th the other great thing was that... Uh, we not only got um, to have a crazy time with each other, you know, meet all sorts of lovely people and uh, have arguments, fights, these late night parties, dancing, everything, everything was there. But it, was, it also gave you a lot of time because you're, maybe many of you have come to find out what you can gain from there. And Iowa gives you a wonderful opportunity to find out for yourself what you're capable of because it gives you a lot of time with yourself if you want it and uh, when we are leading our daily lives wherever we are as writers professionals doctors whatever housewife whatever we are and uh, we we just don't we just get carry on with our uh, a lot of responsibilities and work and we don't get this <laughs> wonderful time when we can be lazy you know uh, besides the w little bit of um, work and preparing like talks and so on is there otherwise you are left alone or you can write or not write you can do what you like it gives you a lot of time to listen to yourself um, in solitude if you want it and i think it's very essential for a writer and many of us need to go away from our normal environment to be able to do that for me particularly it was a boon because as a doctor, I always live, uh, have to interact with people. I'm among people. But I, by nature, I'm a loner. I'm fond of being by myself quite a lot. Or I need it. I need it quite a lot. And I think Iowa gave me this space. And the other very important thing was that it is a very liberal sort of an environment. You don't feel any imposition. You don't feel you have to live up to any expectation. So you tend um, to have whatever interactions you might have are genuine. And this was, again, I think, a, a wonderful thing that happens, happened and happens in Iowa. It's very important for writers. Um, last month, my uh, father told me, you know, whenever somebody asks me what you do, I say, I tell them you're a journalist. And I said, but Baba, I'm not a journalist, I'm a writer. 
And he said, yeah, but nobody respects writers. <laughs> and that attitude actually is a little prevalent in, in our society. I don't think that we are respected very much, understandably so. I mean, I know me and I don't respect me. But um, <laughs> Iowa, we are respected. Iowa reveres writers. Iowa City reveres writers. And for the first time, I was exposed to an environment where the reverence for literature was on permanent and elevated display. Uh, we walked down the street and there are plaques with, <coughs> with quotations on the pavement. So for the first day, I was actually walking around them because I thought, I can't walk on it. And by the end, it was normal to me just to be seeped in that. Um, and the friendships that you make, uh, you know, the others have spoken eloquently already about connection and that does happen and the sense of finding your community and knowing that you have a community all across the world and even if you never see them again, you will be able to, you know they're there. And so suddenly uh, a, a, a web is, is illuminated that you, and you always have that with you. Uh, there are also opportunities to, you know, indulge in a bit of nationalism. The, our first day there, we're given a tour of Iowa City, a guided tour, and we don't know each other. We don't know each other's names yet, so we, but we know, okay, this country, that country. And we were crossing a street, and there was a red light, and the guy in front of me was not sure whether he should cross. And I said, uh, he happened to be from Israel. I said, don't worry, Israel, Pakistan is right behind you. <laughs> 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 and he looked at me because he didn't know me yet, so he wasn't sure I was kidding. <laughs> but, yeah, and Srilala and I, yes, we ended up, I mean, I've been to India before. She's never been to Pakistan before. This is her first time here. And she's here because we met in Iowa City. Um, and, uh, uh, and one of the unfortunate things that happened to us, we thought it was unfortunate. For some reason, we apparently seem identical to people, so people would walk up to her and say, so Shandana, and people would call me Shidala. Christopher Merrill did that to us once too. Uh, <laughs> um, so what we did was we ended up turning that into something. We went to do a reading uh, at uh, American University in Washington. And what we did was I read, uh, we selected uh, short texts from both India and Pakistan. We didn't say who had written it and we read them. We took turns and we asked, can you tell that was written by an Indian or a Pakistani? Apparently we speak the same way also. <laughs> um, and yeah, everybody got it wrong. And, but we thought we're onto something here, this kind of connection. Um, and, and it continues. I'm done. So that gives me a wonderful way to, to segue to the other thing I wanted to talk about today. You, you mentioned the web of connections and the, the the friendships that get put together, and one of them was to bring you and Shridala to the Maldives last year, along with other writers from uh, Silk Road countries, and we have put together um, uh, a website, and I think uh, we're soon we'll be passing around the uh, brochures about that, but do you want to say a word about, you? on the last day when we were together, we were thinking, what can we do that would bring writers from all the way from Afghanistan to India into a conversation, and you had this terrific idea about Ibn Battuta. You want to say a word about that? Well, Ibn Battuta was a traveler, right? And uh, the Silk Road originally was primarily based on commerce. Um, but travelers carry with them not just goods <coughs> or services, they carry with them culture, religion, values, philosophy. That's how civilizations came to know each other and to understand each other. So the whole notion of we need to start traveling to each other also and continue, or you know, be able to continue t to tell our stories to each other across the world. Uh, but I also want to say, uh, Christopher, that I must object to the fact that you took us to the Maldives, to this beautiful island with blue water and white sand, and yeah, it was terrible, really awful. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and with that, I think we'll open it up to <coughs> questions from the audience. Okay. My question is um, uh, not about Iowa, but more pertinent to the India-Pakistan <coughs> relationship. Uh, when we meet at individual levels, we are such great friends and we get along so well. But at, n as at a national level, as nations, 
uh, we don't give each other the right to exist. Uh, why is hate winning over love? And why don't we realize that we are here for 70 years or 60 years and eventually we have to die and we should live in peace. Thank you. May I answer that first? Well, this is an example of love winning over hate actually. So, I'm not really sure what you mean. I, I I think the w one of the ways of doing it is to meet more often. You know, more people from, we, we need to have these exchanges more, more frequently uh, and at different levels because it's not just that writers meet writers. You know, doctors must meet doctors, teachers must meet teachers. I mean, we have to meet uh, as people at all levels and uh, also through art, the uh, through various forms of art, I think, um, this, this process of interaction and connection happens and writing is one of them. But I think it can happen at all levels and it should happen. And Karachi Literary Festival, I would say, is one of the places where I got to understand um, so much of what is rich in Pakistan, besides the three, four days I've already spent here and met various people. I also suggest that we uh, form contracts with Icelanders. <laughs> <laughs> and Israelis. <laughs> okay, it's wonderful to know uh, that you had a great bonding experience at this place. What work did you do there? Uh, Could one of you talk about that? We had, um, a, oh, we had an incredible amount of work to do. I mean, Chris made we were all there on holiday, but we really <laughs> weren't. Uh, we were required to do at least one public reading. We were invited to visit schools, universities, and do public talks and, and work with students. So that was done. Uh, we were always, always uh, attending each other's talks and readings. So it's like being in university, really, for three months. I felt, I felt like it was a writing course for me. And we, we were incredibly supportive of each other, too. So we would always show up for each other's writings and readings. And, and then when we traveled, we also did speaking engagements and we traveled. So we were kind of like roving ambassadors as well. So it wasn't all that cushy, even though I didn't stay in the Iowa house. I got put up at the Sheraton, <laughs> thanks to the, the, the US Embassy's very generous grant the year that I went. But I don't think they did that after the year that I was there. <laughs> they stopped it immediately. And I just wanted to say, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. You were there, the, that was after the flood, right? That was the year of the flood. That's, uh, that's why we were in the show. But she, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yes, yes. Actually, Iowa City had experienced very bad flooding. So our housing was not all organized. So some of us ended up in the shit. But I want to say that our Chinese student didn't burn a bagel. She's, she, she got extremely drunk. I'm sorry my father's in the audience. But uh, she got, and I've never seen so much drinking as I have on this residency. That's another thing writers like to do. Except me, Dad. <laughs> um, so she got extremely drunk and she decided she wanted to run a bath at three in the morning. Except that she got into the bath and passed out while the water was still running. And she ended up flooding an entire floor of Iowa House. And not just the uh, Shamba House, the IWP staff had to rescue her, the firefighters had to come and rescue her, break down her door with an axe, fish her out of the bathtub, put her on the bed, cover her up, and then the, the, there was water damage to the tune of X thousand dollars. So this was, sorry, maybe I shouldn't have told that no, story, no. but now but, that I have. But actually, and there's a, a funny wrinkle at the end of it, which could only happen in Iowa City. So it, she caused a lot of damage. And she and didn't apologize for anything. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so we, we, had, we had different options about how to pay for that damage. Insurance would only cover so much. And, uh, and a Chinese businessman <coughs> sent some money that helped. But was it the same person who sponsored her on the trip? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and then, then uh, we had a, so the, the man who wor runs what's called risk management at the university came to talk to, to my associate director, Hugh Ferrer. And Hugh called me afterwards and said, you're not going to believe it. Only at the University of Iowa could the risk management person also be a poet. <laughs> <laughs> the so he forgave the debt. Oh, <laughs> good ending to the story. See, that only happens in Iowa City. Elsewhere, we'd be in jail. <laughs> How has the residency influenced the work you've done after you went there? Influenced work. 
how has how has the residency influenced your work since you were there? Nobody wants to talk about work. Um, <laughs> actually, uh, one thing it did for me uh, was uh, uh, I have heightened confidence in my own abilities. As Kaveri said earlier, you learn your own capabilities in a way that you didn't before. And I, I embraced um, my craft in a way that I hadn't done before. And I, I also wanted to say earlier when you were asking about the work, in, in residency generally, you are required to finish some work, or to propose a project, and then work on it for a certain amount of time. These guys don't do that. They don't require you to produce anything. They don't require you to have a project. How you spend the time is up to you apart from those mandated events. Um, you know, um, when you have uh, some, some such opportunity and these such, such opportunities are rare, you can uh, squander it and, it's, uh, and there, were, there, were, there, were, there were many uh, 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 colleagues of mine who uh, didn't do uh, anything for three months and I think I think that's also a you know it's uh, I mean that's that's one way you can uh, go about it I if I don't do my work uh, I feel incomplete I I feel somewhat worthless and so no matter what I did in the evening I managed to get my quota in which is, um, for me, it's sort of, it's 300 words a day. And so I would make my quota every single day. And my quota is sort of, it's a, it's a, uh, um, it's, it's a minimum quota. I usually sh overshoot, f I usually hit four or 500 words a day, but I had to do my 300 words a day. And then I had the license to avail of, uh, I mean, you know, the, the, the meager, uh, I mean, I Iowa City is not a metropolitan center, right? It's, so there's, uh, there's there were, I, I did not come across the cows uh, uh, in Iowa City. Uh, uh, but there's not, I mean, there's not a hell of a lot to, to do. Uh, but one did manage to enjoy oneself. But I think it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of silly to squander three months uh, uh, you know, uh, flooding the place and <laughs> burning eggplants. It's That's part of the creative process. Okay. <laughs> we need to you know, I, uh, I live in Hyderabad in India and uh, I think apart from the university libraries and I don't belong to the university in Hyderabad, uh, there is the British Council Library and that is the only uh, place where one can borrow books. And for me, you know, I, I, I have to buy everything that I want to read. And uh, the ability to go to the library and pick even things that are written by people in my country that I don't have access to, the, the ability to read that. I was prepared, I, I went to Oberlin College to deliver a lecture and uh, while I was writing the paper, I needed to read a lot of stuff. And I found everything that I needed in the, in the university library. Uh, there was an excellent public library and uh, uh, Iowa City being a UNESCO city of literature and uh, being the host of the writing workshop, there are so many fantastic poets and writers who come through, who give talks, who do readings at the uh, bookstore at Prairie Lights. And uh, the opportunity to listen to all of these people live I think Elliot Weinberger read while, uh, while we were there. there. There's so many fantastic opportunities to listen to people that you cannot in, in one's own country and in one's own city and to read the kind of things that are not accessible to you. It's inevitable that this kind of thing will uh, have an impact on one's work. It's, it's also hard to assess to what extent, but it's inevitable that it will. I'm just thinking as you're saying that we for a writer, a library is crucial. And there was a Chinese writer of Tibetan descent who made an awful lot of money writing novels about Tibet. But in our library, he discovered all of the papers from the early part of the last century having to do with resolving the question of Tibet in China that, of course, he could not have access to in Beijing. And I think it changed everything about it, the way he was going to write the novel he was at work on at that time. Uh, 
Chris, I was thinking that in my year, there were a number of writers from different countries in the Middle East. And there was a writer from Israel. And um, what I liked was that there was no, I ever somehow created the environment where you did not need to be poli politically correct. And you could, uh, you could talk about, you could vent your feelings. And it was, you know, just right there on the platform, uh, whether people got angry or upset, it was all forgiven. There was, there was something which helped people to progress uh, towards whatever it was, the dilemmas that they faced and uh, in what way they could resolve it or at least come to terms with certain things. But I think it was very important, that particular, uh, you know, thing was, was really valuable. Um. I just want to say that Iowa came at a really important time in my life because I was really at that point not sure whether I was on the right path and I was thinking maybe I shouldn't write anymore, maybe I, this is it. So going to Iowa kind of stopped me from making the fatal career decision to stop writing, so. Thank God you kept writing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, actually, I'd like to just respond to what Shandana said in a lighthearted way. Uh, she said, uh, <clears throat> being a writer is something you don't want to profess. But let me assure you, I've been a chartered accountant all my life. I publish a book now, and, and when, I, when I say I'm a writer, I have a lot more enjoyment out of it. So please don't listen to her. Keep writing. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hearing all this conversation, I somehow had this notion that this entire Iowa res uh, residency program was it an offshoot of the concept of kind of big boss for the artists, for the writers? Oh, there's no cameras. <laughs> no cameras. Otherwise, no cameras. Yeah, we would all be dead by yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> You don't get to see what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody, does anyone want to ask questions right now? I'm just curious about the Silk Road. Why the Silk Road? Why? Why the Silk Road? <laughs> well, um, we had this idea that for a long time, there were the overland Silk Roads. Then there was also a sea lane that went through the Maldives. And we thought, wouldn't it be interesting to try to create a virtual Silk Route where writers could be in conversation with one another, sharing their work, as well as video and tape and all sorts of different things, just to see what might come of it. So much of what happens as a writer is just taking a uh, a chance on doing something, right? You think, what if I put this word next to that word? Let's see what happens. And we thought that if we brought writers together and tried to invent some programs coming out of that, that that might create some sparks that would be useful, including the fact that we have uh, Sridhala and Kaveri here in Karachi right now, thanks to the work that Shandana has done to bring this about. So that's, that's the general idea. Uh, this is Nasa Sumro. Uh, I'd like to put forward, uh, the, somebody asked here a question about India and Pakistan relationship. And uh, we have got difficult time together, like there is this cross-border firing and all of that. I'd like to say, uh, like rather ask all of you that, you know, why don't we consider art as an instrument for a social change? I mean, like we have had uh, many uh, cross-border film uh, you know, actors working together. So I think taking this forward, I mean, why don't we uh, make our leaders realize the fact that we are all brownish people. We are all uh, one people with one color. And then uh, why, why is this gap? I mean, why our leaders do not realize that we, are, we have many things in common? Can I yeah. attempt to answer? Well, um, what you say is uh, right now wishful thinking because politicians everywhere are very hard brained people and they don't um, soften easily and they have their own agenda. And as uh, somebody said at a session this morning, we are as much, we cannot just put everything on the government and say that, oh, the government of the two countries, you know, it's because of them and we just leave it at that. We cannot. If we really want, the, the friendship to continue and for it to progress. Um, as people, we have to do something. <coughs> and art, 
and the humanities is definitely uh, a part of this an instrument of peace what you are saying it happens it doesn't happen like overnight by changing some rule but it happens person to person people to people uh, in how we shed our prejudices and how we try to uh, see the positives and move from there it's it's not uh, what i mean to say is it is it's quite a long process but i think it's already happening I think there is some progress at the human level, at people-to-people -people level. Uh, I'd like to add to that. I don't know how many of you came to Chris's session in the morning on cultural diplomacy, but we writers are cultural diplomats. We're your ambassadors. We're your representatives. If the leadership isn't doing it, you have artists, you have people at this level who are willing to do it. So support the arts, and you will see a lot more connection develop. And I think we've come to our end right now. Yes. Okay. So uh, a big hand, a round of applause for our writers. Thank you so much. Sorry, I just have one more question. Uh, it's working. It's working? Okay. Uh, what uh, Bina said uh, earlier on in the session that, you know, her uh, impression about Iowa of people being generous and, uh, and homely and, and uh, friendly is something that I experienced uh, in 1960 in Iowa City. Uh, I was a student at the uh, high school there in grade nine and my father was a professor of English literature oh, wow. uh, oh at Iowa. So we say go Hawks. Yes, we say go, go Hawks. Hawks. <laughs> and uh, it's such a pleasure to see somebody from Iowa finally uh, at this festival here after five years. So welcome to Karachi. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.